At the beginning of our session together, we would like to discuss basics of process automation and uh, look have a look at what terms are used across um, different fields. As illustrated on the screen, um, the process um, automation is a process we understand a series of steps required to perform a task. And an automation means, on the other hand, a task that does not require human intervention. Ultimately, we are talking about series of steps required to perform a task that do not require human intervention. Of course, Jan will later on discuss semi-automated process automation um, that we, as, as we say, um, have the human factor in the loop, but that's later on. Speaking of process automation in general, you can come across some other terms and abbreviations. Um, for example, RPA, uh, which stands for Robotic Process Automation, and it describes an automated process that mimics human users. DPA, Digital Process Automation, usually used to describe an automated process, including API connections. IPA, Intelligent Process Automation, process automation, including artificial intelligence or some other advanced technology or BPA, business process automation, which is usually used as an umbrella term for all of the uh, all of the mentioned before. To illustrate all the possibilities that process automation has to offer, I will use something called a SIPOC or a CIPOC chart. This chart consists of five process stages, supplier, input, process, output, and client. If we look at the supplier, when it comes to process automation, the source of the data can be anything from a system, an individual guest, property, or centralized office. The input that process automation can work with is very rich as well. It can be a piece of code. Um, it can be an email, files, Excel sheets, PDFs, database records, or just some other record. When we get to the process, we are getting to endless possibilities, and it really it depends on the client's needs. Um, but it can include different validation, calculations, intelligent data processing, or just simple data processing from one system to another. The output can, again, be represented by code, emails, database records, changes to system records, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. As a very generic example here, I've circled a few of these little icons, and um, these demonstrate, um, for example, um, in our case, a individual properties sending PDFs with some data that needs to be processed and input in a system for centralized office to further work with it. Um, you might be asking, what are the good candidates of process automation? Typically, we are talking about updating data within several systems or periodical reporting and simple data processing. But also, this uh, very good candidates are among use cases where integration does not make sense or is not possible due to legacy system um, constraints or API limitations. And last but not least, advanced data processing like calculations, validations, visualizations are also very good candidates for process automation. Now, let's take a look at what advantages process automation brings to your business. First and foremost, it's increased accuracy, which ultimately leads to increased revenue because we all pay for our mistakes. Um, we will eliminate or at least reduce repetitive tasks, which means no training of new staff on those tasks is needed. And also it contributes to increased well-being of your employees and gives you an opportunity to maximize their potential. These all, of course, have an impact on the area we all value the most, and that's the guest satisfaction. <clears throat> 